What's going on guys? In this video I'll be giving you a quick tutorial of Canon T4i, you know, basic setup, user guide, uh, whatever whatever you want to call it. Alright, so let's let's get started. This here is your main screen. This screen right now is locked. By the way, I'm, I'm going to show you how to change the settings in manual mode. You can pretty much do uh, the same thing, very similar things in AV mode as well. Those of you who shoot in, I don't know if you can see this, I'm sorry. Um, those of you who shoot in auto, um, I believe A plus is the green thing is the auto. I've never used auto, so I'm not I'm not too sure, but I believe auto is is that. And you have different portrait and macro setting things like this if you want to use in the beginning. Um, those of you who can shoot in semi-automatic, that's your AV mode, and manual is your full manual. If you're if you want to learn, just check out my videos. It's it's not that hard. Anyway, so right now we are in manual mode. This is your lock screen, okay? This just displays information. Why is this locked? Because when you're taking a picture and your nose is touching the screen, your settings are not going to change. So in order for you to change your settings, press this Q button just one time and you'll see a bunch of other things come up, you know, different grids, things like this. So if you want to change your shutter speed, you can click right here and you can move the dial which is right here okay so if you move this dial your shutter speed is going to change okay how do you change your aperture you can just click here and this will change your aperture okay ISO you can click here and do it or you can click the ISO button right here. So as soon as you uh, press the ISO button, this grid will come up. You can either select it from here or just move the dial. Okay, by the way, what I'm showing you here, a lot of the stuff is very similar in the menu option. And menu option has a lot of other settings that you'll never um, use. I'll go over some of the things in there, but most of the stuff, it's it's basically uh, repetitive. All right, so this part here is your here. Let me turn this on. This does two things. It does a different job in manual mode, and it does a different job in aperture mode. So let me switch to aperture mode first, and show you how to change your exposure compensation. This plus and minus button here is your exposure compensation. I'm not is this okay this this is good so press this button and you'll see this grid is activated this bar is activated move your dial if you want to underexpose the picture by one stop two stop or if you want to overexpose the picture by one stop two stop three stops if you don't know what exposure compensation is please check out my video okay so this is where you change the exposure compensation in AV mode but if you're shooting in manual, then this grid will take three shots for you in different exposure. This is your uh, HDR, high dynamic range. So if you click here, you will see it will tell you shoots three shots with different exposure. So now you can tell the camera, okay, I want my shots to be over and underexposed by one stop you know or two stops or three stops okay so that's a very cool HDR feature if you're using a tripod obviously that's that's the right way to do it so um, everything is basically kind of you know synced in okay so press this again this here is your flash setting click one more time and this is your flash flash exposure compensation. You know, you can tell the flash if you want to overexpose or underexpose. If you understand exposure compensation, flash compensate flash exposure compensation is basically the same thing. Okay, let's go back. Uh, this is for your white balance. I would leave it on auto as is. 
I have done a video on white balance and custom white balance if you if you want to check it out. All right, go back here. This is something you're never going to use. Uh, this is basically just like your uh, HDR. You can take three pictures and you can bracket them. Okay, so you the picture will be taken in three different kinds of white balances. I don't know if anyone's actually going to use this feature or not. Um, I would leave this off as this, which is your, you know, image brightness and contrast. Just leave it at, off. It doesn't even matter if you're shooting in RAW. All right, these, whoops, turn this on. This here is your uh, flash setting. So press this one more time, and this tells you first curtain flash sync. Okay, so I haven't done a video on, uh, you know, there are two types of uh flash curtains. There's first curtain and second curtain, also known as, uh, the second curtain is also known as uh, rear curtain sync, and the first one is known as uh, first curtains, uh, the front fr uh, curtain sync. I haven't done a video on that, so ignore this part. When I do this, you'll understand exactly what it is. Uh, this here basically allows you to use your pop-up flash to fire your external flash. So this is uh, an awesome awesome feature okay go back one shot absolutely imperative that you leave this on one shot here's here's what happens one shot basically allows you to move your focusing points around and and place it exactly where you want to focus so on portraits you should be focusing on on your subjects eye so leave that on one shot AI focus is autofocus you press a button and the camera will focus on the nearest subject or the darkest color. Not good, okay? And AI servo is your continuous uh, shooting when you're photographing moving subject, for example, sports, okay? So if you're shooting for sports, AI servo would, would be better. Now, I, I have done different uh, a video on different focusing modes, so make sure if you want to learn more, to watch that video. All right, so leave this on one shot for now. Go back. All right, this is also leave it on single uh, shot. Okay, continuous shooting is basically when you press this button and you just hold on to it, it's just going to fire up mul multiple shots. This camera can fire up to five shots. So if you're if you're doing uh, sports stuff, jeez, if you're doing sports stuff then you can do continuous shooting this here is your self timer this is your two seconds and this is your 10 seconds or you could just use a remote okay so pretty pretty basic stuff here metering I've done a video on metering a very in-depth video I did on light metering so when you're doing portraits Use, uh, use spot metering. If you're doing landscape, use evaluative metering. This is also known as matrix metering for Nikon. Um, I've seen some people use partial metering. I could not review partial metering because Nikon does not have, uh, when I did the video, I was using Nikon and I did, Nikon does not have partial uh, metering. And let me go back again. And they're centrivated. I have never used it. I don't know anyone who's used it. So I basically go between spot metering and landscape. But it re look, if you watch that metering video, you'll understand exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. Okay, not the most important thing, but in the beginning, it's it's it saves you time, um, and it it just it helps you basically. All right, uh, picture quality. Uh, those of you who shoot in RAW, which is the highest quality, this is your RAW. Those of you who are shooting in just JPEG, they can select large here. I don't like touch screen stuff, man. Uh, medium here, small here. There are different qualities. You just click on them and it will give you an idea. Okay, this is using full 18 megapixel. Um, in small, you're only using 4.5 megapixel. In medium, you're using only 8 megapixel. Okay, those of you looking for the highest quality uh, should be shooting in RAW. Keep in mind, RAW requires a special software. You can't just take pictures in RAW and just 
transfer them onto your computer. You have to have a software that will convert that raw file into JPEG file. Okay, change this to raw. Go back. All right, so that's that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, most of the stuff you can just do from your um, from your screen. Let me show you how focusing works. Uh, let's say you want to focus on your subject's eye. All you have to do is press this button. This grid will show up. And you can either point, which is absolutely senseless because you should not be taking pictures through live view screen. You should be looking in this because you have to hold your camera really firmly. And live view is not good for that. Um, anyway, press this button and you can move these indicators right here. I would not touch this. I would keep an eye in here and move this grid. Same grid is also seen inside, okay? And that's it. Focus and it will lock. Next time when you have to take another shot and change the focusing point, press this button again and you can move these uh, focusing points around, okay? It's very simple to view the picture. Just, you know, press the play button um, and here for example this picture uh, you could oh, you you can't see anything it's I think it's blowing up you can just zoom in like this okay this was actually taken with this camera and this is this is the unedited raw image and you can zoom in like this or just go like this view the pictures by flickering it's not very smooth. I personally don't even view the pictures like this. I just go left and right like that. Okay, so that's how you view the pictures. All right, let me quickly just go over the menu. There's a lot of BS stuff in there, guys. So I'm gonna quickly go over this. Image quality. We've already gone through this. Raw stuff. Beep is when you focus. It beeps. Shutter release without a card. <laughs> God. That just means that if the memory card is not in in here in the camera, can you can the camera still take the picture? Who's going to take a picture when the memory card is not in there? So BS option. Uh, image review. Uh, you can review the image for two seconds, four seconds. Two seconds is not it's not that long, so I would just uh, go with probably four seconds. Um, aberration correction. I would just leave it as is. It's a kit lens. It's going to give you a lot of chromatic aberration. When you use quality lenses, you're not going to have any problem. The camera does not even have to correct anything. Okay. Uh, red eye, I would leave it as off. Flash control, we've already been there in the in the main screen. Exposure compensation and bracketing for your exposure compensation. We've gone through this already. Um, auto lighting optimizer, leave it as off, which is your default. Custom white balance. I've done a video on custom white balance. Most people are not going to use custom white balance. Um, if you do want to learn, you'll just go through the menu because there are different options. You're going to need a gray card to do custom white balance anyway. Okay, we've gone through this white balance uh, uh, bracketing for that. Use sRGB. You just leave it as default. Uh, picture style. We've gone over through this metering mode. Pretty much, we've we've pretty much gone over uh, everything. Uh, yep, ISO. Okay, auto ISO. All right, I would leave it at sixteen hundred. The reason why is because if you take pictures at at night and it's really dark, your ISO can be increased to thirty two hundred, and there's just too much noise at ISO thirty two. There's a lot of noise at sixteen hundred as well, but at least you'll get something out of it, you know. So I would leave maximum 1600 watch my video on ISO because you don't have to take pictures in auto ISO you can simply select the ISO yourself it's not that hard all right live view mode leave it as enable we've already selected the AF method to single um, continuous autofocus is enable uh, this is for your uh, video stuff leave it as default uh, touch shutter leave it as disabled this basically means you can touch the screen and it will take a picture the second you touch the screen to take a picture your camera is going to shake and your picture is going to come out blurry grid display for some people it's very important 
for me it's always off I don't follow the grid display people who are starting out need help with composition this grid right here is your rule of thirds I've done a video on I've done a video on rule of thirds if you want to check that out some people find these grids very helpful for uh, composition so let's just leave it at grid one which is your you know rule of thirds grid okay aspect ratio leave it as that metering timer I gotta be honest with you I I don't know what this is I don't wanna make something up so if anyone knows what meter metering timer is because it's going from four seconds to 30 minutes uh, I'm not sure I don't wanna make anything up and misguide you guys okay uh, let's get out of this option all right protect images this basically uh, prevents you from deleting your pictures by mistake so I don't protect them but if you want to you can just protect everything in that folder which means that even on the computer no one can delete it or you can just protect it on this memory card okay so I'm just gonna go unprotected all right rotate image this basically just rotates the image this deletes it a lot of BS stuff creative filters is just your your retouching uh, basically um, and it will add different you know cool effects to it um, histogram brightness just leave it as as all right, another thing that I am not familiar with, if anyone knows, please let us know. Jump 10 images. I, I, have, I, didn't, I didn't read the, whole, uh, the menu. This, whatever I'm telling you, it's very much similar to your Nikon stuff. Um, so if, if, if anyone wants to look this up, you know, that, would be, that would be great. This will play your slideshow. This you can do, you can rate your pictures. I personally find this helpful, but I don't use this in the camera. I use this in, in Lightroom 4 when I am doing the editing. I, I like to rate my pictures sometimes, you know, like crappy pictures. I still save them just in case if I don't have enough and I'll use them as a, as a filler. Um, anyway, this, uh, you can customize your, you know, uh, file name and, you know, tell them which folder you want this to go in really not that important this will format your card you should not be deleting your pictures from here um, because it can corrupt your card over a long period of time so when you're done transferring your pictures your everything is edited and you want to delete them always format the card and do it three times I'm gonna do a video on on this um, soon okay um, LCD power off 30 seconds uh, which is fine LCD brightness, very, very basic stuff here, guys. Time zone, date, language, NTSC, uh, if you, you know, live in the U.S. and for your Asian market, uh, they use Paul, Pal, not sure what, what's called, uh, well, correctly, uh, correct pronunciation. Um, touch, uh, screen color, you can change your screen color, <laughs> doesn't matter to me, and sensor cleaning very important guys so uh, it is on auto cleaning I don't like that feature that is enabled I would go with clean manually let me show you what I'm talking about the second I'm gonna turn my camera off it's gonna clean my sensor watch it says cleaning sensor every single time I turn off the camera it's going to clean the sensor my only concern is that if if over the course of one year you're turning off and on your camera I don't know four thousand times hypothetical number I don't want this this function to go bad on me so I would just go clean manually and that's it okay whenever you feel there's a dust spot and you want to clean your sensor just come here clean manually or clean now you know whatever Clean now would be would be the better option. Clean manually would be uh, your your mirror lock up, and you open up the lens and just blow air in there. So clean now is going to do the same thing, which is uh, enable every time you turn off the camera. Okay. All right. So that's how it works.
All right, go back right here. This section here is for your copyright information. You can protect your uh, pictures uh, by entering your information right here. You can enter your name, your company name, um, and all that information is just going to get embedded to your picture. So um, it's a cool feature. If you want to clear all, all the settings, this is where you go. If you want to update any firmware, this is where you go to do this. This star section here, you can add your favorite menu settings in this area. Instead of going through all these, looking for what you want to do, um, whichever setting you use the most, you can just simply add in this section. And that will basically, that allows you to quickly, you know, change settings, uh, whichever settings you want. Uh, most of the settings you can change from here anyway. Um, so not sure if you'll be really going in and out of the menu setup that often. Okay, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, hope this helped you. If you're looking to learn uh, more about photography, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, I also have a Facebook page. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Hope all is well, and I'll talk to you guys later.